Hello and welcome to this review of my TE Cleave keyboard. This was a commercial donation from TE themselves that I've unboxed a while ago. However, they asked me not to use any swear words, so please keep in mind that things like shit, fuck, piss, crap, asshole, horse, slut, cunt, dickhead, cock, pussy, damn bastard, poo poo headed wanker are forbidden, unfortunately. Now, as a side note, some of you must be thinking that TE are out of their mind sending me this, considering my famous distaste for ergonomic keyboards. But actually, I regularly get offers like this, I just turn most of them down. I accepted this one mostly because of the switches, but I'll try not to turn the ergonomics part of this review into too much of a joke. <laughs> Promise. So the TE claims to be, as the name says, truly ergonomic. Now because of the split of the keyboard down the middle and stuff, for the uninitiated this may look like it could be the case, but I got quite a few comments in the unboxing video that claimed the opposite, mainly because it's got a fixed rather than adjustable split, and there is no option for tenting, which is when your board looks like this. The most customizable ergonomic keyboards tend to include both of these features, and those also almost invariably tend to be the most expensive, while fixed keyboards like this tend to be a bit more economic budget. At a list price of $330, $250 on a discount as of writing this, it's not exactly a cheap board though. It's also not traditional ergonomic because it's got a relatively normal layout for an ergo keyboard, at first glance at least, because anything remotely resembling something usable is invariably spurned by the ergonomic community. It always has to be super weird, awkward and unintuitive and have a massive switching barrier, otherwise they think your arms are going to drop off or something if you use it, because, you know, assigning a commonly used key to a weaker finger like your pinky means Instant gangrene is all but guaranteed, apparently. Another example of the keyboard's relatively accessible approach to ergonomics is the key stagger, meaning the alignment of the keys, which you'll notice is staggered vertically but not horizontally. Some, although certainly not all, ergo enthusiasts prefer the keys to line up in both directions, which is called ortholinear. Looks like this. But I've never actually heard an argument other than stagger is just a holdover from typewriter days, which I'll point out doesn't automatically mean that it's bad. In fact, I still see no reason why ortholinear should be more ergonomic than staggered layouts, and I don't think I've ever seen any scientific evidence for that claim either. Anyway, because this layout isn't all that hostile, I took to it fairly easily at first. In fact, this is my very first typing on this keyboard, which is remarkably quick for a first crack at a new ergo keyboard for me. So unlike most ergonomic keyboards where my typing speed goes from 60 or 70 words per minute to one character on occasion, this one was not bad. However, as time progressed, I actually got less used to it. While normally with ergo stuff, it does improve at least a little bit. You know, I figure out some of the weird placements and stuff, and even though I might not be able to find everything blindly, I at least know where to look. But here I still can't type without looking at the keyboard, which I can do with a normal keyboard, by the way. I just don't do it the dogmatic home row spastic spider touch typist approved way because I don't want to get RSI and I'm a lazy son of a bitch. Anyway, summarizing, although the layout is relatively friendly for a beginner, it's just weird enough that I can't use it blindly even after a week of use. However, I am now finally typing Y and H with my right hand instead of my left. So there's that. Still not on a normal keyboard though. I've also done a bunch of gaming with it, and this is where it was the most annoying. Now, I know ergo keyboards aren't generally designed for gaming, but I figure a lot of people do it, or want to do it anyway. Now, stuff like WASD, that's fine, not a problem, but things like jumping, which is of course the control button, is much more difficult, because the button is located at a very awkward angle, and it's too small, or too narrow more specifically. Thank god they have a backup third control button over here where the caps lock normally goes. Layouts like this makes you start to appreciate things like that. Also ALT, very instrumental for things like chamber checking of course, is very difficult to access. I'd say it's, <laughs> it's even worse than control. 
Also, the numbers are offset from their normal position because of the lack of horizontal stagger. So if I want to press 2 to switch to another weapon, I keep hitting 1 instead, so I switch to something completely different, which is not helpful. And I keep hitting the tilde key if I want to press 1, etc, etc. Never mind the F keys, which are even weirder, so playing, for example, Diablo 2 is fairly challenging on this. Some other quirks include this left nav cluster actually being page up, page down, home and end keys, which I didn't get time to get used to, but I guess that's an interesting option. There are dedicated paste, cut, undo and copy buttons, which I guess is pretty useful, and rather uniquely for a modern keyboard, an actual back tab key, which outputs shift plus tab on a Windows computer. One major reservation I have with the layout is this cluster here, which I guess could be useful if you got used to it, but I didn't, and I just found it really confusing. Let me show you what I mean. These two keys here are the backspace and delete keys, which is an interesting concept, I guess. And then we've got two small space bars here. Now, split space bars aren't uncommon on ergo keyboards, but these aren't the bottom middle ones like you're used to, and neither are they touching. The bottom middle one are these two, the shift and enter keys respectively. Now I, I just didn't get used to that. It's one of those things that makes me constantly look at the keyboard. Again, I guess it could be good if you got used to it or something, but to me it's just like any weird layout, like Dvorak or Colmac or any ergo layout ever made. It's change for the sake of change as far as I'm concerned. I see zero added benefit to any of it if I'm honest. And I realize that that's just my opinion, but the militant zeal with which ergo enthusiasts generally try to push this stuff on me in the comments, and the subsequent complete lack of results I invariably get out of it, just makes me a bit skeptical of the whole thing, to be honest. Anyway, ergo rant over, the backlight is white only, but at least it's a good white, which is almost impossible to achieve with RGB LEDs, by the way, where the colors pretty much never mix properly. So, not that pretty, but it is more utilitarian. You can customize the light layout by turning individual lights on and off, and it's got a bunch of preset profiles programmed into it as well. The lettering isn't completely evenly lit, but it's not the worst I've ever seen. The keycaps are thin, laser-ablated ABS, by the way. They're uh, not the strongest aspect of this keyboard. <laughs> now, the most interesting thing about the keyboard, at least in my opinion, is actually the switches, because I'm kind of a switch hound. But not just that, most Ergo keyboards come with either rubber domes or some sort of MX-type switches, which is rather meh, in my opinion. But this one actually comes with optoelectric switches, which vastly increases its interestingness in my eyes, and it also helps set it apart from other Ergo keyboards as well. By default, it comes with Utamu optoelectric switches, clicky in my case, which I recently did a teardown video of as well, but you can also switch in Gateron optical if you want, because the board is hot swappable. There is a trick to that, by the way. You need to lift the part that's facing you, forward first and then break out the other side. If you don't do it like that, it's going to be very difficult to take these switches out. They also have their own design of switch, which I have a few of too, and these are, for all intents and purposes, identical to the Utamu ones. But because of the COVID crisis, production of these was delayed, and if they had wanted to use those, they would have had to wait and it would have greatly increased production costs, so they went with the Utamus instead, which makes sense, I would say. By the way, neither of these are the same as Gateron optical switches, as these use a more traditional click jacket setup, whereas these both use Utamu's snap spring design, which is the part where it gets interesting. So anyway, I've got the clicky Utamu optoelectric switches in this one here, and they're very interesting. Like I said, unlike other clicky switches, they use a kind of folded ribbon spring similar to a pair of clappy hands, and it gives them a quite interesting feel. I guess the closest analog is Space Invader switches, but even those are quite different. Utamu also do a non-optical version of these snap spring switches, but I haven't had a chance to try them out yet. Not many options for clicky contactless switches like optoelectric or hall effect ones exist because usually you need some sort of camming action off of a surface to store the energy for the tactile bump and clicky sound so those designs cease to be contactless as is the case here. 
Inversely, smoothness is more important on linear switches because you don't have a tactile event to mask any roughness in the key feel, so scratchy linears stand up more than analogous tactile or clicky switches. But still, I'd say it's not completely useless to have a pseudo-contactless clicky switch, and not just because of the highly increased lifetime and reliability, full N-key rollover, and super-fast response times that these kind of switches can offer. These switches, in terms of performance, are actually really good. Lightweight, perhaps slightly too lightweight, but they are smooth and they have a very crisp, clean tactile event. It feels a bit like a clean break on a firearm trigger, if you know what I mean. It's very pleasant indeed, and it's still got a little bit of resistance at the bottom so that the key feel doesn't feel like a bottomless pit. Sound isn't too bad either, it doesn't have the plastic rattle that click jacket switches like Cherry Amex Blue have. Although it does click on the upstroke as well. It really reminds me of box white switches, but they feel more meaty and satisfying. And what I mean by that is that I guess it feels more like you're typing on the clicker rather than on the coil spring like you do on box switches. It's honestly, it's pretty good. The keyboard has macro functionality as well, and you don't need any software for it. Fuck yeah. It's not very straightforward, unfortunately, as there are three different ways of doing it, depending on what type of key you want to reprogram, and I'm not sure why it's this complicated. Just do with the focus way, damn it. Just press program plus key, then what you want it to output, and then just press the key again. Why did so few other manufacturers do this? And of course, without spare macro keys, it's a bit limited in its usefulness, but Again, at least no bloatware, spyware, key logging software required, so points there. Finally, the build quality. Don't often get to do this last, come to think of it. It comes with a metal wraparound top plate, I think it's aluminium, and the bottom is plastic. It weighs about 885 grams in total, or in imperial units. Oh, I come from Alabama with my banjo on my knee while maintaining a relatively small size of about 34.5 by 23 centimeters, or again in gibberish units, and I've gone to Louisiana, my true love for to see. By the way, these little palm rests are awesome. They're not spongy or anything, quite firm in fact, but they're very comfortable, definitely points there. Overall, what do I even say about this thing? I'm not the right person to judge ergonomicness, really, but I can already tell that this isn't aimed at hardcore ergo peeps. The fact that you can't adjust the split or tenting is enough to instantly disqualify it for them, I suspect. But for people who want to try it or who don't have much experience with it, I dare say this is a fairly easy, low threshold way to do it. Plus, the switches are pretty awesome, and you don't often get that on ergonomic keyboards, so that's a pro, I guess. Do I like it? No, I don't like ergonomic keyboards. I just don't seem to get used to them, and I don't see why I should either. I simply fail to see the point. But of the by now decent amount that I've reviewed, this one wasn't that hostile. That's it for this review. Sorry to end on such an incoherent, confused, and conflicting summary, but yeah. Anyway, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and following is a typing demonstration of me typing on this keyboard.